Good afternoon. It is currently 2.10 on the wild, wild west coast in Sugar's World. I have a Grammy party to go to with Pheromone tonight. So grab a coffee, grab a snack, and let's get glam with Sugar. Mm. Today we're trying the new one size primer. This is Secure the Glow. I've been in my, oh, I should probably, yeah, let's twist the bottle. I've been in my glowy era. I'm over the really, really dry, draggy skin. Oh, okay. Oh, it's like boba. I've never had a boba drink. So let's get her, ooh, I can tell it's gonna be tacky. Let's get her one. Oh, wow, okay. Cause y'all know me, I'm a stickler for skincare. And I know I sound like an annoying Mac employee running around the store being like, it's all about skincare. But it is, they didn't lie. This reminds me of when Nikki Tutorials got everyone up on the post shave bomb, the men's Nivea one, and everyone and their mom was using it. It kind of has that vibe cause it's very tacky. Also, I got my coffee from a local coffee shop down the block from me. I saw the comments in my last video turning myself into a cis woman about boycotting Starbucks and my oblivious ass I was like, wait, what? So I looked into it and girl, it's a mess. So support your local business. And plus it was a great excuse to get this little bell mug. I live. I'm seriously so excited to be having this little Hollywood girls night out with Vera. We become pretty close the past few months. I mean, we did meet like two years ago through a mutual friend, but you know, the universe has a funny way in working out. We've had some like iconic little like dates recently. Like we had an iconic New Year's. We did a walk around Beverly Hills cause she literally lives a few blocks away from me. We went to Cheesecake Factory the other night. We're gonna get into all that when Vera gets here. It's just, I have to give myself some more time. See, I'm talking and trying to do the makeup it's hard so she'll be making her entrance very soon we're gonna finish getting ready together i'm in my creative vortex right now just being here with you doing makeup it's very old school youtube so like i want to take my time and have fun i don't want to be stressed doing this there's gonna be a red carpet at this party tonight i have no idea what to expect you never know with these hollywood parties i'm just happy Vera will be with me by my side in her words we've never been girls together so you know we're gonna be running around like bimbos and taking pictures and Vera's hilarious she was just texting me she had like a spray tan nightmare and she's like girl how do i fix this i'm like get the loofah get the scrub we're gonna be exfoliating see i'm already getting excited and the coffee's hitting it's not good you're getting a caffeinated sugar it's it's over, it's over. Spice and I never even told the story about what happened when we got to the Grammys. Long story short, we get there. I thought I was in the damn but TSA. We were waiting to take photos on the red carpet. I'm laughing with Poppy because she goes, oh, are they gonna make me take off my shoes? I'm like, do I need to put my sweatshirt in the bag? Like that's what it was getting very corporate, very, we were the zoo animals in the corner. Spice was being a diva, she was like, I thought I was getting a solo shot. This is a group shot. And she was like, girl, we gotta leave right after this. I need my content, I'm in my corset. So she's yapping in my ear. The whole red carpet experience was honestly really interesting. I didn't feel like I was on a red carpet until after and Spice was on Twitter and we were in the Uber back leaving. And she was like, oh look, the stuff is already coming out. I'm like, oh, that's how it looks like a red carpet. Not when you're standing there. Cause it's very just like people running around. And, I don't know, it was interesting. So one thing about me and Spice is we're very dedicated to our content once we're in our look because this is like our art project. We don't really live in our drag, you know? That's kind of a foreign concept to us because I'm like, girl, I would only be able to sit in these chairs with a bunch of other drag queens if the belly was out, I was hunched over given man and like ready to hit. Like, girl, no, what's not happening? Like, I gotta work, I'm a working girl. I can't sit here for four hours. So seconds before the Grammys is about to start, the whole cast is sitting in the audience. This cute little man comes over and is like, hey girls, in about an hour, if Drag Race wins, which is like, we all knew it was gonna win because why would you be telling us this? You're gonna go up on stage and then Spice like, I can't wait in this corset. And then there was no AC in there. So we started sweating. I'm like, oh my God, I haven't even got my photos yet because we thought we were gonna take it on the carpet. I was like, oh no girl, I need my runway walk. Like, I don't really care about this. It's like, what, a bunch of old white men giving out awards. I'm like, girl, I'm good. I'll, I'll, I'll catch the highlights on YouTube tomorrow. But yeah, we literally left before it even started. The best part was when I saw Rue Michelle on the carpet, we had to like pass each other because I guess they didn't really want us interacting with them. I'm like, girl, the competition's done. We can just be people, it's okay. So Spice is like, turn, 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 that's them. And I was like, you know what? Let me have my little movie moment right now. So I just strutted right past them. I looked Michelle right in the eyes and I was like, hey, how are you guys? 
And then like Rue made eye contact with me. And then I think I heard Michelle go, pretty. And then I was like, hee And then like, just kept walking, just kind of like smizing, giving model moment. And I was like, we can leave now. <laughs> But it's like Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen when Lindsay Lohan needs Megan Fox to see her at the party. I mean, you know what they say, looking good is the best revenge, so kisses. Meanwhile, Spice is like, I'm not looking at her. <laughs> Paying her dust. That's the match I wanted to see. Get the cameras up on those two. Have I been calling it the Grammys the whole time? It was the Emmys. I'm going to the Grammys party tonight. <laughs> I think the second best part of the Emmys experience, if you will, was when Spice made the dramatic decision of, okay, sugar, we're going, round them up, get your stuff. And we literally had to walk out of the exit from the front, that was the only way to get out. And we had to walk like five blocks to order a car. So it was really dramatic. We're walking past all the civilians going into the event and we're like strutting with like our long trains and some people like recognize us like, sugar, Spice, where are you going? And we're like, home. My brain started short circuiting. I was like, okay, like, what do I want to do for my content? Like what would be a cute photo op moment now that the red carpet photo is kind of a disaster because I, Miss Sugar needed her solo shot, I'm sorry. So I literally went to the Winchells, 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 I always say it wrong, down the street from me. I'm like, oh, this will be a cute tumbler donut with the gown moment. I know it's kind of like cliche, but to me, I like the juxtaposition of being super glam and kind of a, ooh, excuse me a trashy spot, even though getting donuts isn't trashy, but the aesthetic kind of is, you know, just like eating a donut. It's very, my name is Bella Hadid, and she's like showing herself like eating a donut. It's like, girl, we got it, you're thin, you threw it in the trash after you took the picture. It's okay, so did I. <laughs> but it's weird though, because later that night when I went to the Cheesecake Factory, Your Secret, which was also such a highlight with Spice, and you know, you're kind of decompressing and going in on the night, that's always the best part. I actually went in on food there, but not when I was in drag, because I wouldn't have been able to enjoy it. Like, come on, trying to scarf down a donut with a corset and your intestines pulled, not really a good match. Going in with my Kiehl's under eye cream today, not the Trader Joe's, she's a versatile. <laughs> Thank you so much for 6K on my little baby, AKA this channel. I know that might not be a lot to some, but for me, this is, this is me riding solo, okay? And I appreciate every person that's gonna subscribe and join the little community we have going. I'm sure you can probably relate to not feeling like this life is yours to live. I don't know, I just always felt kind of like an accessory to everyone else. Like, oh, I'm here just to serve others and make them happy. It doesn't really matter how I feel or if I'm enjoying life as long as everyone else is around me, AKA being the world's biggest people pleaser. And with this channel, I feel like I'm breaking out of that and I'm just free to be me. And you're all inspiring me so much in the comments to keep going. I feel like my voice is being heard. I also really appreciate the non-sugar-coated critiques. Someone was commenting on one of my really early videos. Uh, oh, maybe you should edit this down a bit more. It's too long. So let me know if you like the longer videos or shorter. I feel like I'm going in the direction of having longer videos. It's just they're gonna be better. I'm able to articulate myself more clearly now that I'm not depressed. I mean, so the one video where I actually agree with the person where I was like, girl, this should be edited down more was my sugar's guide to how to look like a superstar. And for me, I was just lucky I was getting words out at that point because I thought I was recovered. But looking back, I was still in a deep, dark place. I was not mentally free, if you will. So my words were a little jambled. So, you know, be easy on me. I'm getting better at this. I'm a short form queen, so I'm still trying to figure out the long form. But I'm leaning on the side of having longer videos because these are more laid back, they're chill. I want you to throw them on when you got chores to do or you just need like a friend to get you through a dark moment in the day. This is how I always loved YouTube. I always wanted my dream YouTubers to just throw up relaxed content so I feel like I'm just hanging out with you and there's no pressure. So hopefully that's coming across. But be honest with me, this is all about you. I want the best viewer experience possible. I know it's corny, but my life task is to help and heal others. And I feel like in a weird way, the biggest gift I have right now is this platform, this YouTube channel, because I, my soul is just lit on fire because I feel like I can actually be of service to others now. And not that I wasn't before, 
but this feels authentic. Mac Studio Fix full coverage, my tried and true. We're manifesting a Mac makeup campaign for sure. Okay, I'm gonna just put my manifestations out there and I want you guys to do it in the comments as well. We have to speak it into existence. But I don't know, ever since I saw the Alexa Demi makeup campaign with Mac a few years ago, I just envisioned it. I don't know, I remember going into the Mac on Long Island and the really, really sweet girl, she, honestly, she was like an angel looking back, that Mac worker. She walked around the whole store with Spice and I and we were beginning drag queens and she got us our perfect shade and we had so much fun with her and she ended up following us. It was just such an amazing makeup experience. That's why Mac is my tried and true. And I honestly stand them so much because it just makes me think of the 90s supermodels because I feel like Mac Mac really had its poppin' heyday moment then. Not that it's still not poppin', but I feel like that's when the brand became iconic, you know? I just think of the 90s supermodels, and I think of the MAC liners, and more of the darker, mauve lips. That would definitely be a dream to work with them. Like, uh, and like, y'all know me, my America's Next Top Model fantasy would be jumping out. I'd be like, I'd be like, oh, this is my cover girl campaign, and I'd be like, easy breezy. Well, not that. I'd be more like, uh, and even if it doesn't happen, it's okay because I feel like I have my makeup campaign moment during the Drag Race promo with this shot. And I was so nervous that day because like you kind of just like black out and you're like, what was I even giving? And when I shot my promo, the video portion, I was the last one to go. It was really rushed. It was right before break. So they go, okay, sugar, we got five minutes. So you got to turn it out real quick. Well, they didn't say that, but I was like, I got to turn it out. Okay. And I started to sweat and I was like, well, my interview's later. So the face can't be gone. So I still have to reserve myself. I was supposed to do a full runway walk they didn't even do that so i was like oh my god they probably have no footage of me lo and behold it's all about having one and that was kind of the shot of the promo i feel like like can i have myself out for once damn i can't always be so self-deprecating but you know it was sickening like when a year later lux is just like on her feed she sends me the screenshot and she goes now this face was it so thank you lux <laughs> now some advice i could give you for having more good occurrences show up in your life and have every little dream of yours come into fruition. It's to practice gratitude. I know so many people say that, but I think it honestly goes over a lot of people's head what it actually means to be grateful and appreciate where you are in this exact moment. I was on my hot girl walk and I was just feeling so good about this YouTube because I have just been having so much fun like putting together my apartment and making these videos. I know it's just the beginning of this journey, but one thing you'll learn about me is I'm fearless. Okay, when I start something, I put my all into it and there is no going back. I know this is probably like a risk to some people. Like, girl, why are you spending so much time doing these YouTube videos? And I have my other projects I'm working on, but this is really fueling me. So I was literally telling the universe, show me the way. You lead the way. I let go of all resistance for once. Universe, you take care of it. Seconds later, I got a text from no other than the iconic Pheromone, and this is Tuesday. So she's like, hey, you wanna go to this Grammys party with me on Friday? And I was like, oh my God, this is perfect. Me and Pheromone, we're gonna be getting glam together. So not only is it gonna be such a fun night tonight, just be so girly pop and, you know, just icons being icons, I get to make more content for you guys. So it's a win-win. Synchronicity show up when you least expect it. Like, of course, this is the universe rewarding me for feeling good and getting into a high frequency of alignment and being like, oh, you like this? Well, we'll give you more of this. Here's an opportunity to do something fun for your channel and live life, of course, but I want you to be a part of it too. I, I want to share my love, you know? <laughs> we'll get into it when Vera gets here, but I really am just so grateful for her friendship as well. I always loved her, but honestly getting to know her the past few months even more, I'm like, wow, she's such a special person. If you haven't watched her Maddie Morphsis interview, definitely go and watch it. She has been through so much. She inspires me every day. Her resilience for life, her passion to not only grow as an artist, but just grow as a person is like, wow. And to know her really is to love her. And not only is she gorgeous and so talented, but she's hilarious. Like, I really don't think I've ever met someone funnier than Farah. I just feel like she doesn't get her comedy credit, you know? So that's why Miss Sugar is here. My, I, my entire existence is just to validate Farah, basically. Like, let's, let's give her some love.
I'm just really grateful to be with Farah today and have our little moment together because y'all saw me and Spice's journey on Drag Race and you know our history with having friendships with other drag queens. It's always been something I really wanted for myself, that sense of community. Farah has just been such a light. I feel like I manifested this friendship because I lived for her. I actually didn't start watching Drag Race until season 10. I know, I know. I was an ANTM girly and also that's a story for another day. I was just rejecting the dragness in me whenever drag race would pop up i'd be like abort 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 because deep down i still had eternalized homophobia i think a lot of gays do especially in your coming of age moments so if i saw another gay being confident with themselves and owning their femininity that was like way too confronting for me so i it took me a minute to watch it so i didn't grow up with drag race and that's probably why i was bad at drag race because i didn't really get the memo i was like oh i thought this is like supposed to be like entertaining a show i didn't know like you're actually supposed to compete and there's like rules and all that bs and politics so even though i didn't watch season nine when it was airing i did know who farah was because she did that iconic video with James Charles. We'll have to talk about it when she gets here or not, but she's just hilarious. She was like, that's when a bullet gate happened and I was like on the plane having to deal with that mess and they're trying to cancel me and I'm just like, wow, 2017, what a time to be alive. But Fair is iconic to me because I'll never forget that highlighter she did in the James video. I didn't know much other drag queens besides... Raja and also Laganja Estranja. Even though I didn't watch the show in high school, I had this one friend, Christina Zacker, and she loved Naomi Smalls and Laganja. So she'd always put their clips up on YouTube. And it's funny because I think when we were hanging out, she's like, girl, you're a drag queen. Like, of course you would love this show. And she was trying to convince me. That's what you always do. You convince the friend that's not really into drag race. You show him the pretty fashion queen. She's showing me Naomi's Instagram at the time. And she's like, she's sickening. She's a model. And I was like, okay, I could get into that. Because I don't know. I feel like for the standard person that isn't a fan of drag you look at most drag queens and you're like "Ooh, well at least they're funny <laughs> and obviously beauty isn't the end all be all but like come on we can spend a little bit more time blending out that cut crease because my girls in Sugar's World, we care about the cut crease. <laughs> if you couldn't tell by now, I am officially the queen of living in my own world. Hence my username, Sugar's World. But I'm having so much fun entering your world. And I hate to be the girl like, I'm different. Or like, I've never fit in my whole life. But honestly, it is the truth. But I've never really cared to fit in. And I think that's the positive of having Spice by my side my whole life. Because I'm like, I know I'm different, but at least we have each other. So I never really felt I was that different. I would just feel me being different when I would enter certain communities or groups. I guess like the theater department in high school or the photography department in college. And especially now with the drag community being an identical twin that came from TikTok and is doing drag in their bedroom and not in the clubs in the middle of Long Island. And now there are internet stars that haven't been on drag. I understand why we would kind of be the outsiders, but it's fun being an outsider because you become a really good observer. And that's my favorite thing in the world, just to observe human behavior. I'm obsessed with psychology. I think it's all in what people don't say. It's all in the way people move and their body language and their aura. And I love channeling that and tapping into that. So I've learned so much about human nature, especially dealing with all these drag queens in this industry. I feel like I have so much to say and just, it will all be unveiled because, you know, Miss Sugar and her revelations, I'm always I'm always getting downloads, if you will, right? And I, I keep them in the back of my head. And honestly, you know, you gotta let people mistake your kindness for weakness. It's not like I'm storing all these things and waiting to unleash. It's just, no, I know who to give my time to now. I'm not the person to sabotage you. Basically, I'll never forget the way a lot of these girls treated Spice and I. I don't hold it against them because I understand if I was in their shoes, I would treat us the same but it just gives me a better perspective on humanity and honestly everything is a growing moment so i'm fine if someone's gonna be shitty to me it's okay it just gives me insight on your character and then i know you better
This has been such a fun, creative little challenge for me the past two days, putting together this look. Yesterday, I was in Santee Alley with Eddie because I was, you know, coming up with something really quick. Once an idea comes, I'm going a mile a minute. My brain is short circuiting. I'm like, oh, I can do this hair with this lash. And, you know, I'm going in my saved files. I'm like, okay, we have to give. Like, what are we going to do? So yesterday, I was at Santee Alley with Eddie. Y'all know him. And then our friend Cam. And we were just being icons, trotting about. I got this Hello Kitty purse isn't she so cute i'm gonna wear her with my look today but she's so iconic because i was literally standing in this random store and all the employees were like what is that girl on and i'm like just high on life <laughs> don't mind me i was literally going back and forth between if this purse was cunt or not i was like is she giving dolls kill or is she cunt and there's nothing wrong with giving dolls kill it's just you know we try to go for a more elevated doll but ultimately i was like no 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 this is the purse Miss Hello Kitty. And I actually use my purses now because before they were just props. I'm like, no, now like when I go out tonight, will my phone fit in? Like, will my lip gloss be? When Spice and I went to this House of Avalon premiere party that was very interesting, we got there and like, I didn't really think it was like a real event. So I had like a huge bag and we just like threw it in the corner with like my brush and all this stuff. I'm like, no, let me be like a real person going to a party and actually put stuff in my purse. Look how cute these little puffs are I got from Santee Al yesterday. I feel like my life is now forever changed. Like it's just so sugar and dull to be using a pink little sponge, right? I feel like I need to go to Santee Alley and get all of their knockoff makeup. I feel like that'd be such an interesting video because I got some good stuff. I mean, the lash is, I mean, Santee Alley is onto something. All your favorite brands are basically just repurposed stuff that was made really cheap. So this is basically the same thing. To me, these Santee Alley eyelashes are Chanel. I don't even know if Chanel makes eyelashes, but if they were, it would be these just in Chanel packaging. So, life hacks, baby. Okay, the moment of truth. Y'all know me with the packing under eye little method. First, you go into the powder, right? So you get your sponge all filled up, puff. And the sugar hack is to press the powder onto your hand before applying it to your under eye. You want to do this because if you don't, it could be chunky laying on the sponge and then it's going to like chunky and be all clumpy underneath your eye. So make sure it's smooth on the sponge and then you press, 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 boom, boom, and flawless. Just, oh, that was like the, I'm always using these sponges. Ooh, okay. Oh yeah, because it gets right up in the little tear duct area. That's what we need. We're going to carve out the nose. Oh, it's so easy. Oh, it's so much easier because before I was using more of the puff, but this point, ooh, okay. The point is sugar approved. Girlies, get on your pointed puff moment. A pointed puff, there we go. Ooh, okay, Farrah just texted me. She's gonna be here soon. But let me insert the footage of us from the Cheesecake Factory the other night. It was me, Spice, Farrah, and our friends Jaden and Marley. I need to do my makeup. Oh my God, see, I'm like rushing and I'm trying to talk. Miss Sugar, she's really not the best multitasker, but you know, somehow it always works out. The Cheesecake Factory story is clearly more important. Say hi. Oh, things that come and go. We just had the most iconic time. We ordered from the Skinny Licious menu. Pharaoh was like, I need to be skinny and snatch for Friday. And I just love saying Skinny Licious. I think everyone at our table got something from that menu. And the waitress is like, okay, so you're gonna do the skinny tacos and the skinny Chinese salad and the skinny this. And I'm like, what gay intern wanted to make history with the Skinny Licious menu? Like they really sat down and they were like, we're gonna call it Skinny Licious. Like I'm obsessed with anything licious, like a sugar licious, a burger licious. We got our Diet Cokes, of course. And when we were done, we came back to my place, had a little bonfire, fire moment. Those are always my favorite moments with friends. The end of the day, the end of the hang, where you can just be a little bit more vulnerable and talk about the things that really matter because you know, time and place at Cheesecake Factory. Why do we need to get into all your traumas and dramas? Okay, Farrah's gonna be here any second. I got this little blue glitter stick from Santee Alley yesterday, my new favorite place. So, oh, it's tiny. Okay, this is more like a liner. I was gonna put this on here as a base for my glitter. Okay, let's see if it works. We're gonna slide this on and then I have a blue glitter. Hmm. 
It's not giving enough for me. Okay, this was a flop. Let me go with my tried and true Stila. So I use this as a base for my glitter. Okay, there we go. This is brightening as well. And the applicator is way thicker. That was way too thin to cover the matted surface area I needed. Now I'm going in with the Anastasia Loose Glitters. I love them so much. And the packaging is amazing because they kind of open and close like that. So there's not the glitter mess that you're probably used to. I put it into the little cap and get her on a flat brush. And now we're going to go to town. Okay, let's see. Oh, wow. Oh, let me get close so y'all can really get into her gig. Oh, this is gorgeous. This is sensational. I love that word. My dress is a cotton candy fantasy, so it's kind of this aqua blue and pink. So, of course, the cut crease has to match the dress. But does the cut crease match the dress? Does the cut crease match the dress? Mug check-in, mug check-in. <laughs> I'm so annoying. They're literally just texting me. She's like throwing on my lip and I'm on my way over to you. And I'm like, wow, I'm doing my lip too. This is a Krylon lip stain. I ordered so many from the website because I fell in love with Krylon when I was over there in London. I went to the Krylon store. It was so fascinating. It was an amazing world of cosmetics because they have a lot of good stuff for stage and theater. So a drag queen's dream because it's not the normal products. You know, let me just put on the lip. What shade is she? You can order her because they don't really have the Krylon stores in the States. Okay, Swing. This is more of a cool tone, which I've been needing because my other ones, y'all don't care. Oh, wow. This is like bubblegum pink. I'm living. And what I like about these is that they come in lighter shades. I feel like all the lipsticks in the States, they're like dark mauves and nudes, which is cute. But Miss Sugar, she needs to lighten up the sound of the lip. We're contouring here. We're making a new lip. Can't believe I like finished on time. This is like unheard of for me. Then we're gonna top with the Anastasia Gloss and Guava. I've been obsessed with this gloss and this shade it's just my entire life. Oh my God, it smells so good. It's like a cupcake. Okay, Farrah update. She's running a little late, but so am I. So I'm gonna put on my wig. I just styled her this morning. Uh, Y'all know me, the sugar signature is putting a wig on underneath. Oh, what is she saying? There's never enough time. She forgot her selfie light. Oh, baby girl, I got that for you. Let's get this bitch in. Well, let me respond to Vera first. First, we're gonna spray some got to be on the hairline, but that's a red carpet nightmare, having your wig slide back and not be laid down. Okay, the moment of truth. I always get so nervous putting this on. Y'all know Miss Sugar and her forehead height. It always needs to be big. Okay. Ooh, am I getting it good on the first try? Oh my God, I'm living. I'm living. I think it's safe to say this is my best wig. Let's bring her forward. This is always the moment of truth. Ah! Oh my God. Okay. This is an instant sugar classic. The blonde and the pink. Yes, ma'am. And it's blended the lace. I'm so proud of how I melted that lace. Because y'all know Miss Sugar, the first episode of Drag Race, Miss Mistress had to clock my lace. But you know, I had to have one flaw because being too perfect is just not relatable. Do y'all see the sugar character like coming out like once the hair's on? I go from wholesome twink. Oh, Ferris here. I go, let me get my joke in. I go from wholesome twink to sugar bitchy bratty. Okay, let me answer. Guess who made it? Oh. <laughs> um. oh my God, we're twins. Oh, we're so cute. The drag version and the girl version. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's, um, I need to put on, well, the body's already on. What do you need to do? Oh, you're like flawless. I'm ready, I'm ready, so I can help you do whatever. Ooh, she's giving every, oh, do you like the little Hello Kitty purse? Love. Is this what you're wearing tonight? Yeah, 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 that's cute. So cute. But what do I need to do? I need to put on nails. Well, let me, oh, you know what? I have the corset, ready? Yep. So I was gonna wear this other one. I feel like since, um, Spice isn't here, like, normally she'd yell at me for, like, she wants me more cinched. But right. like, why can't I be comfortable? Why not? This is like... Nobody gives a fuck. No, we're gonna face-tune it anyway. That part. I'm not wearing a corset. <laughs> no, I gagged. I saw Shea Coulee. It was seven years ago today. Oh, oh the uh, season nine announcement. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay, wait. I almost posted something, but I was too busy getting ready all day. Oh, well, <laughs> she's uh, she's booked and busy. You're giving me full fair faucets. Oh. You know it's gonna be a gag if Farrah's stepping out on town. I know, because you know? I just hate going. We're back. Ready? I'm gonna squeeze really, really tight. It's like the most bizarre thing. It's basically a fabric corset. Okay. 
Let's see. Yeah. Ready? I'll hold it. Because it's a comfortable corset, you know, so you can sit. Come on. <laughs> We're like breaking our backs trying to get this. <laughs> oh my god, yes. yes! Oh, she has it. Okay. She sorry. has it. Ready? <laughs> go, go, go. Oh my god, I'm already sweating off my makeup. <laughs> Me too. Did we get it? <laughs> yes. The gag is we Woo! both. Skinny Daddy Daddy Daddy. Daddy. The gag is we both started getting ready at one. And we're You got ready at one too. Yeah, and we took and we're still running late. Well actually it was two o'clock. Where's my dress? Well, okay, we're gonna slide her on. Farah, tell them how you feel about the promo being so long ago. Seven years? <laughs> It feels so crazy. <laughs> I feel like you're like you were just born. Like you're only I four know. years old. How could how could it be seven years ago? It was an imposter. <laughs> the, the fake pheromone is right. so much older. Right. I'm only eleven. Well, how? Um, well, I guess uh, the girlies don't like to talk about age, right? I was going to say how. Well, how, how old were you when you filmed? Oh, oh I was twenty-two. So it was eight years ago. Eight years ago we filmed, seven years ago. Oh, the right. Came. Okay. This is my first time trying on this dress, so let's see. When you invited me, I was like, what's the most sugary, like, OG Farah moment I could do? Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> okay. Gotta get over the hips. I'm so happy you're here because this morning was the tanning catastrophe. <laughs> yeah. Tell them what happened because the other night you were like, girl, I'm getting my spray tan, I'm gonna be living. So I usually do my own self tans because I used to spend like $150 a week on spray tans and I just, you know, your girl just is a little more smart with her money after the pandemic. But this is a special occasion. We're gonna be photographed in HD with no Facetune, Getty images. So I got a professional spray tan, but I woke up today and it was so blotchy because I guess I didn't exfoliate enough. So I like scraped most of it off, but it looks good. No, it came out great. I was so scared. Like, <laughs> you know, sometimes when like shit hits the fan, you're like, you know what, fuck it, I'm not going. Yeah. I was like, no girl, get the exfoliating mitt. We're going to slay tonight. <laughs> well, no, like as, every time you got excited about this event, it made, it kind of helped me like reel back every time I wanted to cancel. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I'm that's I invited the you because you've like kept me motivated. To I know. Ooh, ooh. Do you want to, um, not me like making you like do these things, would you want to kind of like tie Absolutely. this in the back? Should we make, okay, let's get the hair out of the way. It's fine if you see the little black, no one's looking at that. It will come Yeah, soon. but it might close pretty tight. Okay, yeah, let's close those tight and go. Let's see. Ooh, I'm going to get my little chicken cutlets to give just a little breast. Just a, your whole. Oh yeah, you can't even see it. <laughs> okay, slice, slice, slice. I was uh, telling uh, Sugar's World earlier kind of how we have became friends in the past few months, even though we met like two years ago. Oh, yeah. But I would consider us friends. It's just life happens. Well, y'all were like <laughs> filming Drag Race and then dealing right. with the chaos of that. And I right. was dealing with my <laughs> own things. I wasn't really right. seeing much of anybody, so... No, you're kind of having your comeback moment after the Maddie interview. She's back out on the town, the Grammys night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, tell me how that looks. No, this is like really... Like take a little peek at the bow I did. Sickening. Do I need to tuck it or... No, I kind of like it. Yeah? I'm, I'm down for that. Oh, I have my jacket because y'all know me. I always need to cover up my damn man um, arms. Or maybe I don't have bad man arms. It's a society that... Um, makes us feel like we have man arms. <laughs> like, why can't women have just a little tiny bit masculine arms? Why not? Right, like, who cares? It's like, we're at valid. Least we're valid, and at least we know you can pick up your groceries. You don't want a limp woman. <laughs> well, these little arms are kind of giving, like, limp <laughs> baby no, girl. No, you're giving baby girl. <laughs> I couldn't even carry, like, my milk up the stairs. I what, need a man. What was that line? Like, you're like Aquarian testosterone. I'm pheromone on testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who said that to who again? Um, Aja or something? Oh, she's sickening. Eddie made this. Bam. Ooh. Oh my god, this is so cute. Ooh. Okay, I should probably get the little... Well, it is giving boob illusion. Oh, you know what? I have these like large condoms. If you do a, sh if you do a shimmer down the middle, it'll really... It will like... Yeah, yeah let me add that's all, actually all I do. Oh, she's sickening. I just do a shimmer in the middle. See, the purses always get me. To, like, I, ugh. You're not a purse girl. You're always losing your purse. You know what we're in for tonight? I do know um, that it's going to be a lot of like TikTokers. Okay. Like, TikToker type influencers and like Instagram baddies of, but I, I really don't know what really to expect. Right. My stylist kind of told me some of the people that were going to be there, but like, I don't think he's heard, but. 
<laughs> just like talking Why in the corner of the video. Were. That was such a meme. <laughs> just like me and my disassociative thoughts and just like in the corner of the room, just like looking at the wall talking. But there's a mirror there, y'all. Okay, let's put that on. I have to glue my earrings on because otherwise they're going to be flying right off. I have to get them oh, pierced. Oh, glued on too. Oh, oh those I earrings are giving. Mm, thanks. Yes, and you're so golden. I love a tan Farah. Do you like a pale Farah? I find my makeup so much harder to match when I'm pale. Is that weird? Well, yes, talk to Spice. <laughs> that pale bitch would know. No, okay. It's actually so much harder. When you're tan, you can right. kind of like even it out with like the contour and the highlight and the blush and all of that. And it kind of like works. But <clears throat> right, every time I get a pale foundation, it doesn't match me. It It'll like get. match in the store and then I actually try it. I don't know. But I used to be pink undertoned, and then right. I quit drinking, and now I'm neutral. Oh. Like, I think the pinkness was from inflammation, from drinking. That's honestly really interesting. Well, you yeah. know what? For me, when I'm my natural pale skin tone, I'm, like, blue. I'm so pink, I'm blue. <laughs> so this spray tan gives me my yellowiness. And, like, when they sent, yes. uh, like, you the know gold. what? The gold. And like, you know, when PR is like, what uh, foundation shade you, uh, are you? And I'm like, the medium warm every time. It's like, meanwhile, I'm like literally blue, but got to match the spray tan. I, I hate when, they, like, they need to send me three different foundations because babes, I don't know what color I am in <laughs> No, exactly. It's like, I need a whole line. Yeah, I need, I need like three different pales and three different tans. Yeah. Well, my biggest pet peeve is when drag queens, when the contour is the darkest part on their body, I feel like your contour should always match your chest. Right. I hate when it's like a pale exactly. chest and then like a dark. There are some queens. I'm not gonna be shady. They but just like, don't I, know. Yeah, they learn. They learn. Right. They do learn. I I was one of those girls. I used Mac Blunt. Do you know that contour shade? Blunt. It, they might know. It's um by Mac. It's like a little round bronzer, I guess. Or, okay. But it's a dark reddish Love brown, that. and it's it's like the color of like a blunt wrap. Um, uh, uh and subway wrap. Blunt. <laughs> a what? Like a like a cigar. Oh, uh, okay. But okay. I used to like even when I was pale, I used to contour so hard with that in 2012. Mm. Yes. No, fair. I was. And then I learned. I was um, talking to Sugar's World earlier about how the first time I saw you was on James Charles's channel, but then you were telling me like you were stressing out because it was like. You were like, oh my God, am I gonna get canceled? Like, he, Cause he was getting canceled at the time. It like was, what happened? It was during Ebola gate. Okay. It was his first scandal. I guess he was like 17 or something. And he had like, he was going to South Africa and he was like, hope I don't get Ebola on Twitter. And everyone right. he, like landed in South Africa to like um, a shit storm. And then my video came out with him. <laughs> Perfect timing. Oh, the crookedness of this all. But yeah, Farrah's literally my falling queen. The first day on set, I had the big heels and we were doing the group number. And the producers were like, girl, you're gonna trip on those. And I was like, oh no, baby, like I want to fall. I'm manifesting this. <laughs> because of the memes, the viral moment. Like it's literally my brand at this point. Like That's so <laughs> funny though, because like it really was so traumatizing for me. I know, you know what? It's about taking the power back. It needs to be. That's funny because like with my fall, I was not manifesting that. I was like really not wanting to fall. Like I wanted my viral moment to be the moment I spent $10,000 on. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Um, I always say it doesn't matter if you fall. It just matters how hot you look when you get back up. Purr. And you know what? It's like the hot girls fall. Like if you're perfectly balanced, I'm sorry. Yeah, like, what's wrong with you? Go to the doctor. Right. Like uh, th there's something deep, deep, yeah. deep going on if you're perfectly balanced. Right. Like you need to go through <laughs> some more things. Right. But also like you're actually winning because at the end of the day, Drag Race is all about being memorable. Girl, how many years ago was that? And we're still talking about Farrah's fall. The other girls, we can't even remember their names. <laughs> So. <laughs> oh my god, we really can't. You on uh you doing the rate Jack. queen and you didn't know who any of the girls were from the Jax girl. Jax. Jax plural. Well, you know, same thing, right? J A C K S. Do you remember all the girls from your season at least? Or do you talk oh, to them? Of course. You know, I wish we talked more, but I'm really close still with like Alexis Michelle and Shea Coulee and um 
uh, Aja and love. Yeah, um, I love Nina Bonita Brown. I know. I am the biggest fan of Nina Bonita okay, Brown. Okay, good. Yes, I'm the biggest. Okay, good. I don't even think she knows this, but like, I'm the biggest Nina Bonita Brown fan. I like everything she ever posts, and I like love her Whitney Houston. I love her drag so much, and I just. She says some problematic things, but I don't really. Like, it's just Nina. Bonita. You know, it's twenty twenty four. Just do her. Would things. you rather her think it and not say it? But at the end of the day, you all have probably said worse things off camera. So at least applaud her for being brave enough to say her actual opinion. Like, as do a, we agree? As a trans person, I like. I don't know. I think she's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but weren't you roommates with Gomic or? Oh yeah, but she wasn't on my season. Oh, okay, okay. Well, no, that was the whole drama. It was like Nina and got Mick. Like she was saying oh, right. about the padding. Oh, right. <laughs> but I was gagged. I didn't know y'all were I knew she had said something about trans people, but I wasn't sure what it was. But, if, you know, Nina's going to be Nina. I know. Well... You can't take her too seriously. Just have fun with her. No, exactly. I want to like bring. I want to like do a video of her because I want her to get the love she deserves. Because she's so talented. She's such a trailblazer. My mom. She's like my mom's favorite from season nine. Like my mom is like obsessed with Nina Bonina Brown. Your mom hates you. Confirmed. <laughs> okay, let's does. let's put on the nails. Oh, is so cunty. <laughs> I know. I still have like so much uh, to get together with this. Hello. <laughs> <gasps> this is she. Oh, you've got the wrong number, sir. Yeah, no, that's the wrong number. <laughs> you have the wrong number. He thought you were the phone sex hotline. Oh, well. Weren't you like a phone operator though? Wasn't that like your thing it from- was one of my various survival <laughs> gigs back when my, I was a teenager, yeah. Love. But it's less phone sex and more counseling, really. Right. So you were giving therapy? Like the most memorable moment I had was like someone had called the the hotline and they got linked to me and they started talking about like how their wife had like found their phone history and that they were calling the sex hotline and they like didn't know what to do and they felt like their life was crumbling down but they were like so addicted to the phone sex that they like, couldn't stop and, they, and basically I had to like keep him on the line as long as I could to get every dollar. Wow. <laughs> Well, I'm happy. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that, but she just doesn't understand you. Have you tried approaching your phone sex fetish with her? <laughs> Have you tried including her in your fantasies? Right. <laughs> Maybe you could go on a trip and give her a call. <laughs> oh. Invite boys over later. Yeah, of I'm course. Film a movie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Guys, Farrah is probably the funniest person I know. Um, my favorite bit is her talking to her twinks. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. I'm just kidding. Oh, what happened to him? Oh, he just, I got rid of him. Why? He just wasn't a man enough for me. We had the most iconic, I need to glue down my nails. We had the most iconic New Year's, me and Farrah. I feel like that's when we really bonded a few weeks ago. It's like a month ago. And, uh, you were telling me all about this man you were talking to. Yeah, so y'all, y'all, I usually date older, right? But this younger guy was like really, really trying to get my attention, like over and over and over. And after I like turned him down like five times, I finally realized, okay, well maybe he's so persistent, like maybe right. I'll just give it a shot. Right. But yeah, no, he's still just like all the other young guys, and I, no. Nah. So well, I know you've had some tumult. How do you say tumultuous? Tumultuous relationships in the past but i love your dating life updates because i feel like how could you not love farah like i'm always just like these men are just effing it up they're ruining their shot yeah but i also kind of ruin it too because because of my tumultuous past i like have this deep disdain for males right so like it doesn't take much for me to get turned off and like run away Okay, well, is that, like, your defense mechanism, you would I say? I think so. Me and my therapist are figuring it out. Right. <laughs> well, I'm happy you got the new therapist. The new therapist, she's sickening. He is so sickening. I can't wait for my appointment on Monday. <laughs> I love that. Just, like, calling your therapist. Oh, we were talking about this last night. It was just how, like, well, weren't we? Or maybe it was just a dream I had about just how sickening, like, when straight people hear it, they're like, wait, are you sick? Like, they don't get it. And we're over here like, girl, I'm gagging. She's sickening. And Oh, yeah. it was sickening. Yes. Sickening. Um, <laughs> what was it? Because you were, oh, 
We were talking about some tea that we can't share with Sugar's World. Oh, I love that tea. I love that tea. <laughs> and she goes, that's sickening. And I was like, huh? And she goes, no, 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 like, not the good sickening, like, Sickening. No, I used it like a bad sickening in my yes. life. It was a derogatory sickening. <laughs> well, what are your favorite gay terms? Because recently I've been loving like the gagger. So like, oh, she's the gagger. Oh. Or like gorged out, like gagged out. You know? I feel like gorge, like, is well, it's a very it's been overdone. Right? And it's yeah. just it's well, actually, Miley originated uh, gorge. Really, no, Miley's not bishop. He was telling me that they got it from him. Isn't that a gag? That is crazy. Yeah. They confirmed I let them. But every saying always comes from one gay in a corner, right? Well, it's hard to really narrow it down because, right. like, I could argue that I've been saying gorge for 10 years, but, you know, where's right. the proof? Like, you popped out. It feels and... like I've been saying it forever. Well, yeah, no. <laughs> gorge is done. <laughs> gorge is done. I mean, well, what was the first word you said when you popped out of the womb? Mm. Was it mommy or was it, uh... <laughs> Not mommy. <laughs> was it, uh... I don't know. What are you saying? Is it daddy? <laughs> you said you don't love me. <laughs> Does that get annoying when people say your drag race quotes to you? Not you don't love me and not let's get, get this rose to cooking. But it is kind of obnoxious when we're like, Will you moan for me? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, finishing touches. I need to put makeup on my hands because... My spray tan didn't really come out that much of a sleigh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, mine wasn't as bad as yours, Miss Farah. I know, and somehow I made it work. I'm so happy. Thank God. Have you had, like, red carpet disasters in the past? Like, what about for Drag Race? Was that always, like, clear sailing when you had to do the finale and all that? You know, season nine reunion, I was a little stressed out because that big old pink hair wasn't what it was supposed to be. Oh, iconic. It was supposed to be more of like a shorter, slip back, like Sharon Stone moment. Oh, that's but interesting. It somehow ended up like that. So yeah, I was a little anxious, but they gave us so much alcohol on the day of our reunion. Like, no! And they told us like, whoever finishes first gets to drink more. And so really? I like, brushed my makeup that day. So I was so, I like, needed a drink. I was so nervous. <laughs> you were like ready to go. Yeah. You sat down with Drag Race and you said, we're gonna make history. <laughs> we needed a drink on our set because it was getting boring boots. It was very sterile. It was very like corporate. I'm like, this is not a good environment for the queens to act up. Like I felt like Rue came out, the lights came on and everyone kind of went mute. I was like, where's the fun? This is camp. Y'all weren't drunk for yours? No, we needed to be. No, they should have. They probably learned their lesson with <laughs> booze and queens. You guys ruined it for us. <laughs> okay, so what else do I Panty. need? Oh, I do need the panty. I do need a brush. I need to be glam. This is the brush Trisha got for me. Oh, it's so glitzy. Let me see it. Oh, it's it right? It so oh, pretty? that's so cunty. She said it was like five hundred dollars. I'm like, girl, what? Well, yeah, those um, some of those boar bristle brushes can get really expensive if you get like a high end one. Yeah, and then covered in crystals. Yeah, it's always deciding like, do I put the hair in the front or the back i feel like i know i'm ha okay guys what do y'all think should we do this or should we do this this is like the like the doll lification comes out because you want the hair to be perfectly placed okay we're on the way to the grammys event vera how are you feeling i'm feeling like pussy feeling like cunt <laughs> we're so glam right now we just took our photos on the canon g7x just giving insta baddie mm, insta baddies so what's your tips before going into a Hollywood event like this? Like, how? what should I channel right now? Like, what energy should we be giving? Think old Hollywood. Think Marilyn. Think Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn. Think, um... Classy? Yes. Classy, <laughs> elegant. Think Pamela Anderson in the 90s. Okay. Think, um... We're gonna channel, channel you. Ferris Fa Farrah Fawcett, Christina Aguilera, all the divas. Just all the divas. Be classy. <laughs> Concise. It doesn't get more glam than being in the back of an Uber with a selfie light, just giving the gifts. In Hollywood. In Hollywood. Show them Hollywood. Oh, look. Hollywood. Hi, Hollywood. Oh. Everybody comes to Hollywood. They want to make it in the neighborhood. She's a singer. They like the smell of it in Hollywood. How could it hurt you when it looks so good? <laughs> well, let's get into the nails. 
nail girl, the nailification. The cuntification, the nailification, roll up the bluntification. Her. That's gonna be us in like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> We're so cap. We just made it back from WeHo. I don't know how we ended up there. But the Grammys party really wasn't giving the give, Farah explained. I spent the whole night in a line, so I didn't see anybody. Yeah, well, you got she got her Gettys, she got her Gettys, and then Farrah's like, let's go to WeHo. So we really gagged the girls, because I I haven't been out in WeHo in, like, two years in drag. Like, what? We should do it, like, once every six months. No, and gag the girls. <laughs> yeah. No, it was so cute, and everyone was like, oh, my God, check out Farrah Moan, and, like, it was just so... Because we're so girly pop together, so they were not, like, expecting the girly popness, and it was like... They would, like, think I was spice, and then I would turn around, and they'd be like, oh, I know. Well, they didn't recognize you. They get they were gagging about the glow up. Or were they gagging about... Just how sick you What was her name again? <laughs> they almost like didn't know how to address your give. I love that. <laughs> the give was, they, they couldn't, the give was just giving so much that they got got. Yes, you gorged out. <laughs> You're the gagger. Oh, my nail. The gaggerella. <laughs> the gaggerella. We're in Farah's place. We need to get on ready. Let's go film that TikTok. Mm. Okay, uh, bye, Sugar's World. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, Sugar's World. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Mwah. <laughs> well, now it's Farrah's World. Oh, and we just stepped into it. Bingo.